Hi everyone, we are now in week three and for this week our topic is all about artists and artisans. Let's also talk about production process, medium and technique. Okay, let's start. First, let us differentiate artists and artisans. Okay, an artist creates something whose only value is aesthetic. An artisan creates something that is functional, like you're making bread or creating furniture or etc., but attempts to imbue some elements of artistry or aesthetics in his craft. An artist typically makes works of fine art that are shown, entered into fine art competitions, and sold as unique, original, signed pieces that may have no practical use other than to be displayed and enjoyed. While an artisan is someone who does skilled work with their hands, a worker in a skilled trade, especially one that involves making things by hand. Street markets where local artisans display hand-woven textiles, painted ceramics, and leather goods. So perhaps you have seen this one on the streets. The artist, or artisan rather, may make very creative and beautiful work that requires a lot of skill. And the work may be very special or even unique compared to mass-produced products, but the artisan generally approaches the work as a trade. Then let's go now to production. So there are three parts as shown in the illustration there. So we have the pre-production is the process of fixing some of the elements involved in a film, a play, or other performance. Or it also means a preparation. Whereas post-production is part of the filmmaking, video production, and photography. It occurs in the process predominantly after filming, but can be done in the process of while filming. It normally occurs on site for a photo shoot, as they color correct to make certain aspects of object or a person to pop out and make sure that only one object or person is where your eyes land first. Then post-production consists of one is color correction. It is a step which has a huge effect on the visual side of any production. It can make your short films or images go from not too shabby to cinema quality. That's how much of an impact it has on a film productions and image manipulation. Sound balancing is a process of creating a soundtrack for a video. In silent films, it's essential as it tells the story and what's happening, of what is happening. And it puts on some emotions into the film. For films in general, it means balancing sound to make everything fit in with the scene. Then we have effects. We have audio sound editing. Um, it's a key aspect of a film as it adds some additional feelings to the film. Then visual editing. As stated above, short film don't have much visual effects besides color grading, but it depends on the film, okay? Or types of film. Then diacritic sound. It is primarily generated by the objects and mainly anything we see in the frame image the sounds come from within the sound of the narrative or narration. Then medium and technique. The choices a designer or artist can make are determined by the characteristics of the materials used and techniques applied to those materials. The combination of materials and techniques used are also referred to us as medium used. So art medium refers to the art materials or artists supplies used to create a work of art 
basically it's whatever you use to make a mark upon a surface an art medium is any material used in art projects like sculpting painting and sketching and then art medium also options are limited only by the artist's imagination so it's all up to you it's all up to the artists so there are here um, mediums of visual arts in 2D. Okay, so first let's have this one. Type of medium like watercolor. I know you are familiar with this. It is simple coloring medium which has less luminous effect when applied but easy to use and affordable. Fresco painting is used exclusively on plaster walls and ceilings. The medium of fresco has been used for thousands of years but is most associated with its use in Christian images during the Renaissance period in Europe. Then we have pastel and chalk. These are dry pigments held together by a gum binder and compressed into stick. You are also familiar with this. Okay. So here are examples. You have their pastel and then painting made from pastel. Okay, like that. So it's nice, made of pastel color. Then another one that's oil pastel. You can also try this one at home. So what do you mean by painting class? Painting is the application of pigments to a support surface that establishes an image, design, or decoration. In art, the term painting describes both the act and the result. Most painting is created with pigment in liquid form and applied with a brush. Then there are here examples made from paintings made from fresco. Shown in example, Michelangelo, um, creation of Adam. Then another medium, we have oil. It is pigment mixed with licensed or linseed oil, seed oil, and applied in canvas, rather. Expensive, flexible, glossy, but dry slowly, and last long. It lasts long. Then we have tempera. It is a mineral pigment mixed with egg yolk, or egg white, and ore. Then we have encaustic. This was used in Egyptian in the portrait of face as in the case of community dawn with wax colors by the use of heat. Tempera paintings are traditionally applied in successive thin layers called glazes, painstakingly built up using networks of cross-hatched lines. Because of this technique, tempera paintings are known for their detail. In early Christianity, tempera was also used extensively to paint images of religious icons. Yes, yeah, so here, one of the most influential artists of the time used tempera paint in the creation of the Crivo Madonna. Or Crivoli. That's an Italian word. You can see sharpness of line and shape in this well-preserved work of art and the detail that the artist renders in the face and skin tones of the Madonna. So here, okay, like that. Okay, so perfect. Then acrylic. This is the medium most widely used by the painters these days because of the characteristics of transparency and quick drying. Then stained glass. It is a combination of small pieces of colored glass held together by hands of lead. Tapestry, it is a fabric consisting of um, warp where colored threads are woven to make designs used in wall hangings or furniture cover. Mosaic, it is a picture decoration which are cut small pieces of colored stones or glass and glued are pasted on surface with cement or plaster. Crayons, these are pigments bound by wax and compressed into painted sticks. Then we have charcoal. This is also made from carbonized materials from heating wood. Now what's 
nice about these mediums is that uh, during our face-to-face -face, um, lecture or discussions we had in my class, we did this one. It was really a beautiful work of art of my students. But you can try also this one at home, okay? So let's have this one, some mosaic. That's it. You can also, uh, some students of mine, they use beads, then crayons, then we have charcoal. Beautiful paintings, beautiful work of art. The following are the mediums of visual arts in 3D. Okay, so like that. So here, mediums used in 3D, we have stone, granite, more expensive, wood, brass, gold, then silver, clay, then glass, then here, wait, lead, plaster, then marble too, and then also jade. Then what do you mean by techniques? So techniques refer to the means, a process, or a method of using the medium. So those mediums that we mentioned. In a manner that he wishes to finish an artwork. Okay, so that is your technique. It could also be your style. How do you use those mediums that I showed to you um, in the previous slides? So the following art are techniques used in creating the works of art. Blowing or itching. Printing transfer design, tinkering, slattering, throwing, coloring, flowing, and cutting. So like that. Tinkering, splattering, blowing, then itching. Okay, so those are technique. How you carve, okay, and how you use this medium. Okay, so I would like to share this to you before I end uh, my discussion today. A quote from St. Francis of Assisi. He who works with hands, with his hands, is a laborer. He who works with his hands and his head is a craftsman. He who works with his hands and his head and his heart is an artist. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much for your participation and then I hope you learned something today. Thank you and see you again.